You're watching Ruroni K95's movie review on an American tale, Fievel Goes West. Hi, Ruronis. This is your pal, Ruroni K95 here. Today's movie review, I get to cover another American tale movie that I haven't reviewed, which is particularly from my childhood favorite movies I have. For today's movie review is An American Tale, Fievel Goes West. An American Tale, Fievel Goes West is a 1991 British and anim American animated comedy western film directed by Phil Nibelink and Simon Wells with producer Steven Spielberg for his Amblimation Animation Studio and released by Universal Pictures. A sequel to An American Tale, the film who follows the story of the Moskowitzes, a family of, U of Jewish Ukrainian mice who um, migrate to the Wild West in it especially. So, this is the one where Fievel is separated from his family, but this time it's in the Old West this time. So, let's review the movie An American Tale, Fievel Goes West. Let's begin. In 1890, five years after immigrating to the United States, the impoverished Mouskowitz family discovers that conditions are not as ideal as they had hoped, as they find themselves still struggling against the attacks of mouse-hungry cats particularly what you see in American Tale, Fievel Goes West. Fievel spends his days thinking about thinking about the Wild West dog sheriff named Wiley Burp, who is played by James Stewart, even though this is James Stewart's last movie until he passed away. While his older sister, Tanya, dreams of becoming a singer, meanwhile, Tiger's girlfriend, Miss Kitty, leaves him to find a new life out west, remarking that perhaps she is looking for a cat that is more like a dog particularly. Shortly after the mouse community falls under a another attack by the cats, this time led by an aristocratic cat named Cadar Wall, who played by John Cleese, who is known for the Monty Python fame, forcing the, my the mice, including Fievel's family, to flee into the sewers. There, they come across a mouse in a cowboy outfit, who is in a fact a mouse marionette controlled by Cadar Wall, who entices the mice into moving yet again to a better life out west. Tiger chases the train, trying to catch up with his friends, including his friend Fievel, but is thrown off, of course, by a pack of angry dogs. While on the train, Fievel wanders off into the livestock car, where he overhears the cats revealing their plot to turn them into mouse burgers. After being discovered, he is thrown from the train by Cadar Wall's hench spider named T.R. Chula, who is voiced by John Lovitz. Landing him in the middle of the desert, which is from out of the nowhere, his family is devastated once again over his loss and arrive in Green River, Utah, with heavy hearts. Upon arrival at Green River, Chula blocks up the water tower, drying up the river. Kadar Wall approaches the mice and purposely is to blind a new saloon together, although intending it to trick the mice into doing the bulk of the work and then eat them afterwards, which is particularly what is going on. Which is not almost not in a good way. Meanwhile, Fievel is wandering aimlessly through the desert with no water when he was thirsty for water. As Tiger, who has found his way out of the west as well, and they pass each other. However, they fi each figure that the other is a mirage, and continue on their separate ways. Tiger is captured by Mouse Indians and hailed as a god, particularly which Tiger becomes as a god, as which has granted. Five, by this time, Fievel is picked up by a hawk, dropped opt over the Mouse Indian village, and reunites with Tiger. Tiger chooses to stay with Fievel in a, in a while. Fievel catches a passing tumbleweed as his sage coach, which Tiger refers to, with the song Rawhide by the Blues Brothers played in the movie as well, which we'll get to at in just a moment, which takes him to Green River. As soon as he makes his right arrival, he quickly reunites with his family, and, but is able to convince them of Kadar Wall's plans to kill them. He later stumbles up into the saloon, where he overhears the cat's plan yet again, but he, before he is discovered once more by Kadar Wall. However, before Kadar Wall can eat Fievel to keep his plan from um, becoming underdone, he hears Tanya singing Dreams to Dream, and is enchanted by her voice. 
in the process, what you expect seeing, what is going on in American Tale, Five Goes West, if you've ever seen the movie, which is probably in your childhood, or if you have. He sends Tanya to Miss Kitty, who is now a saloon girl cat, and she reveals that she came at Cat R. Wall's request. He tells Miss Kitty to put her on stage, and with a little encouragement from Miss Kitty, she pulls off a performance for the cats. Meanwhile, Fivel is chased by Chula and briefly taken prisoner, but flees. While walking out of town, by this time, Fivel stops to talk with an elderly bloodhound sleeping outside the, the jail, which you guessed it, it's Wiley Burp, discovering that he is, is actually Wiley Burp at first. Fivel convinces him to help and train Tiger as a lawman and as a dog. Tiger is reluctant at first, but the rel he relents at the suggestion that a new persona might win back Miss Kitty. They go back to Green River to fight the cats who attempt to kill the mice at sunset during the, the opening of Kadar Wall's saloon using a concealed giant mouse trap, is what you see. Above of all this, Tiger, Wily Burp, and Fival intervene and battle the cats, during which Miss Kitty and Tanya discover the trap. Tanya rushes to the mice and using her singing. And knowing that Kadar Wall will not allow the trap to be triggered if she is there, particularly by this, which uh, basically alerts them to all to what's happening is how the tra to the trap and warns them to flee. Seeing this, Kadar Wall unveils a giant revolver, which he fires at the fleeing mice as a makeshift cannon, until Wily catapults Fival to the gun which the mouse quickly intercepts from the attempts to use against Kadar Wall when Chula threatens to kill Miss Kitty in an attempt to force Fival to back down. However, an incensed tiger rescues her and uses Chula's web as a lasso with him trapped on it to hurdle Kadar Wall and his men out of town by having them piled on part of the trap. Which basically the trains let, which is basically when you see the train left, uh, left with the west as well, particularly at this point. What you see in a, as you know, as well, the cats fly into the air and land onto the mail bag, which a passing train picks up and leaves the ghost, the western town as well. Enamored by his new personality, Miss Kitty and Tiger are reunited. Tanya becomes, becomes a famous singer, and the water tower flows with the 9,000 gallons of water again, which makes making Green River bloom with thousands of flowers. Until Fival finds Wily Burp away from the party, who hands him his sheriff badge, and then Fival is unsure about taking it, but realizes that his journey is not over. And that's how you end this movie, is what Wiley Burp told Fievel, is that one man's sunset is another man's dawn, which is beyond those canyons or those hills, which Wiley Burp says in the movie, which he might be the one that... Fievel may be the hero that he may be looking for. And that's how you end this movie. Uh, how Fievel has hat changes to its way, as you noticed, how this movie ends if you will. And that's my review on An American Tale, Fievel Goes West, a sequel to Steven Spielberg's An American Tale, under the working title An American Tale 2, was put into pre-production by David Christianer in April 1988, after he finished pr producing Child's Play, when announcing the project that the same month, he summarized that Fievel will fight the cat tie barons. It's like a John Ford Western with Jewish mice. Christianer started the pre-production as Steven Spielberg setting up filming for Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade in Europe as well. He was not involved in the production and post-production and admitted in 1993 that he disliked Fievel Goes West as an entertainment without the character. The screenplay was written by Flint Dill, who was led to the position by writing for Steven Spielberg's series Tiny Toon Adventures. Spielberg produced the live-action animated film Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which was the top-grossing motion picture of 1988 as a key way to keep the movie's animators working due to the closure of Richard Williams' animation as you noticed. Spielberg formed 
Amblimation, a collaboration of Universal City Studios and Amblim Entertainment, whose offices were located in London, England, Five Will Goes West was its first production, and over 250 crew members in 15 different nations worked on the project starting in May 1989, which is before the 90s begin. At the time, Amblimation was developing We're Back, A Dinosaur Story, and Balto, which is another movie released later in 1995 as well, what you noticed in American Tale. Well, Five Will Goes West has a lot to do with and a screen adaptation of Andrew Lloyd's Webster, Weber's Cats, which never saw a compilation in December 1988, Universal announced that they would, would release an animated film a every 18 months and begin production of An American Tale 2 in early 1989. Don Bluth, who had partnered Steven Spielberg on the both original film and The Land Before Time, was set to direct and have Sullivan Bluth Studios provide the animation, owing to creative differences. However, they parted ways. As Bluth explains, the business dealt eel wasn't such that it helped our company. With no Bluth in sight for a sequel, Spielberg instead relied on ex-Disney animator Phil Nibelink and ex-Richard Williams storyboard artist Simon Wells, the great-grandson of the of science fiction author H.G. Wells, to direct the project. Nibelink and Wells, who had previously worked with Spielberg as a supervising animators on Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Bluth started in April 1992 that he regretted his decision, admitting that he disliked the final product of Fievel Goes West and maybe could have helped the, the film a little more, particularly. With John Cleese as the first choice of Cat R. Wall, he was approached in 1989 by the one of the film's producers what, at what Cleese vaguely called the Italian Oscars. He accepted the offer, uh, his base enjoyment of the first American tale. And I love sound studios anyway. There's none of the hassle and boredom at the time wasting you get in television. Cleese was paid his lowest fee in 10 years for the role, which made him very unwilling to publicize his involvement with Five Will Goes West. According to Kathy Cavendini, there was another woman initially planned to voice Tanya but left the project, so Cav a Kathy Cavendini replaced her. Spielberg met James Stewart at a party, asking him to voice Wiley Burp, and all of Stewart's lines were recorded in 10 days. His last involvement in, West in a Western was... The Shootist movie, which was released in 1976 as well. And yet, this movie wasn't directed by Steven Spielberg as well, particularly what Five Goes West has a lot to do with, particularly. And yet, Five Goes West was initially planned for a 1990 fall re 1990 re release, but it was delayed to a 19 late 1991 date. In 1989, then it was moved again to Christmas 1992, but reverting to Christmas 1991 in May 1990, with the subtitle, Fievel Goes West, and a follow-up television series, Fievel's American Tales was also first announced. It was the first move to the fall of 1991 in November 1990. So this is particularly James Stewart's last movie until he passed away. Because, you know, the actor James Stewart, who did the voice of Wiley Burp in American Tale, Five Will Goes West, this was his last movie until he passed away. I mean, if you haven't seen an American Tale, Five Will Goes West, I highly recommend to watch it. If you can get it on DVD or Blu-ray, because this is basically my favorite movie from my childhood. I mean, it's been a while since I watched this on VHS, and I still do to this day. So that's going to be it for my movie review on an American Tale, Five Will Goes West for today's movie review. Thank you for watching, but before we go, here's my thoughts on this. I really admire this movie, and it's how astounding with this movie, despite that there are some Western settings in this movie, because this is a follow-up to An American Tale. It's been a while since I watched this movie on VHS lots of times, as well as on DVD millions of times as well. And this is my second favorite childhood movie of mine, which is very nostalgic to this day as well. Hope to subscribe for content, my anime plant link in the description below. You can share this video on your Twitter or Facebook if you have a Twitter or Facebook account and all social media. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up by clicking on the like button on this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, RuniK95. Feel free to join my channel, especially new my channel. Hit the notifications bell button. Leave in the comments in the comment section below. And I got another movie review coming up next. What I have here. Stay tuned for my next movie review. I got another movie review for the, for the next movie review on The Outsiders. Until next time.